As you probably know, the Ford Coyote is an absolute powerhouse of an engine. It outputs a ton of power and it's really advanced Ford's given displacement. Now over the years, Ford has changed the Coyote quite a bit and there have been a lot of upgrades to it. And now there are three generations of the Ford Coyote. So today we're gonna dive in and look at all three generations and find out what makes each one special and why the Ford Coyote is as good as it is today. 2010 Ford released an all new design for the Mustang, but the problem was it still had the old 4.6 motor. Now while that motor did its job and it made you know relatively decent power, it was pretty terrible compared to what GM was offering at the time in their pony cars and their trucks and the Corvette and pretty much everything. It was really a bad motor in comparison to those. So when Ford brought back the 5 liter in the form of the Coyote, it really brought the Mustang back into contention with the best sports cars and the best pony cars in the world. The Coyote featured an all new design which was drastically different than the old 4.6, but it did share some features that kept it in the Ford modular family. The Coyote uses an all aluminum design. So we're talking about an all aluminum block and aluminum cylinder heads, and it also uses a plastic composite intake manifold similar to what you would find on the older 4.6 motors. Inside the engine, a lot of things were changed, but a few things did stay the same. Bore and stroke measure at 92.7 millimeters and 92.2 millimeters, which brings total displacement to 4,951 cc's or five liters. Now, what's really interesting is that the bore spacing of 100 millimeters and the deck height of 227 millimeters are carried over from the 4.6. The downside to this is that it limits bore size but makes the engine easier to package and smaller overall. The compression ratio is set at 11 to 1, which at the time upset some enthusiasts because boosting a high compression motor is quite a bit more difficult than boosting a low compression motor. But ultimately that high compression ratio is one of the keys that allowed the Coyote to make so much power naturally aspirated. From the outside looking in, the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Coyotes are nearly identical. And really from the outside, you can't even really tell them apart. Now the big changes come internally. Gen 2 has larger valves, a larger camshaft, and revised cylinder heads, which allow it to flow quite a bit more than Gen 1. Ford also added motion control valves, which are supposed to help idle stability, uh, but a lot of enthusiasts end up deleting them in the name of maximum airflow at peak RPM. As I mentioned in previous videos, cylinder heads are pretty much the key to making a lot of power. You'll see this with GM LS motors that flow a huge amount of air, with Honda heads that flow a huge amount of air, and now with the Ford Coyote. Good airflow through your cylinder heads is pretty much the number one factor for making good, a good amount of power. Now the outgoing three valve had a single overhead cam design with three valves per cylinder as the name states. Now the Coyote is drastically better than this in the sense that it has dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder. Having a single overhead cam setup means that you can't exactly adjust valve overlap. It's pretty much set in place. With a dual overhead cam motor, you're really easily able to adjust valve overlap, also known as LSA, with the right hardware. And Ford added this hardware with their TIVCT system. Although this system was not new to Ford in 2011, it was new to Ford in the US and this is something that we hadn't seen before and it's really the key that allows the Coyote to make so much power. So this system works by basically allowing the intake and exhaust camshafts to retard or advance their timing independent of crankshaft rotation. To put it simply, intake and exhaust camshaft timing both have a 50 degree swing, allowing for a massive amount of adjustment. The benefits of independent cam timing are increased fuel economy with lower emissions, but the real benefit comes in the form of dynamic lobe separation angle or valve overlap. On engines without adjustable cam timing, such as the GM LS platform, lobe separation angle is a fixed aspect of the camshafts and it cannot be adjusted. Camshafts with a wide LSA have more low end power and cams with a narrow LSA have more top end power. Coyote and Ford's TIVCT system, you get the best of both worlds since LSA can change depending on the RPM that the engine is at. Add boost to the equation and you can see why the Coyote is such an efficient platform thanks to that TIVCT system. Now the changes between the blocks in Gen 1 and Gen 2 are pretty minor and they're really not even worth mentioning. The blocks are nearly identical between Gen 1 and Gen 2. But when they made the jump to Gen 3, things changed quite a bit because Ford went to a semi-closed deck design. Gen 3 block also saw improved knock sensors, 12 millimeter head bolts, and better oiling. So the Gen 1s are, were rated at 420 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque, which really wasn't bad at the time. Like we mentioned earlier, TIVCT is a huge part of the technology that made the Coyote so much more advanced than any other American V8 engine at the time. 
time. Gen 1 Coyotes feature a fairly basic port fuel injection setup, similar to earlier modular motors. So when Ford released the all new S550 platform is when they introduced the Gen 2 motor. And the Gen 2 featured a lot of upgrades that made it pretty much better in every single aspect compared to the Gen 1. But most of those changes were focused on increasing airflow and improving high RPM operation. The second generation cylinder heads feature larger intake and exhaust valves as well as larger intake and exhaust camshafts. Since the Gen 2 uses larger valves, the pistons receive larger valve reliefs. Ford also added stiffer valve springs to reduce the potential of valve float at high RPM. The intake ports on the heads were also revised to increase flow and really take advantage of the larger cams and valves. The forged connecting rods on the Gen 1 Boss 302 engine came standard for all Gen 2 engines, which further improved strength and durability during high RPM operation. So all the changes that we just talked about going from Gen 1 to Gen 2 increased power output from 420 horsepower to 435 horsepower and 390 pound feet up to 400 pound feet. And what's even more impressive is that both peak RPM and peak torque are at the same exact RPM range. This makes this a really, really good improvement and it's basically just more power without really any sacrifice. In 2018 Ford released the Gen 3 which was the biggest change to the Coyote platform yet. Biggest and most obvious change to the Gen 3 is the fact that Ford added direct injection but they did it quite a bit different than how other manufacturers do their direct injection. Instead of replacing their port injection entirely with direct injection Ford decided to use both because there are pros and cons to both systems. So to get the best of both worlds, the Gen 3 has port fuel injection and direct fuel injection. Now, thanks to that direct injection system, Ford was able to increase the compression ratio from 11 to 1 to 12 to 1, which again isn't great for boosted motors, but in the case of a naturally aspirated engine, that's really, really great. Another big change on the Gen 3 was the increased bore diameter from 92.7 millimeters to 93 millimeters. This slightly increased total displacement, but it's a very, very minor increase. Ford also decided to ditch the steel cylinder sleeves in favor of plasma transferred wire arc cylinder walls, which could also be found on the 5.2 GT350 motor. The cylinder heads were also revised again for the Gen 3 to further improve flow, and the casting materials were made stronger. The Gen 3 cylinder heads feature larger intake and exhaust valves, as well as increased lobe lift on both the intake and exhaust camshafts. The goal with these cylinder head changes was to make the heads flow similar to the 5.2 GT350 head. Now, all the changes that we just mentioned to go from Gen 2 to Gen 3 increased power from 435 horsepower to 460 horsepower and 400 pound feet up to 420 pound feet. Now, this is a huge increase naturally aspirated and again peak power and peak torque are left at the same exact rpm so now that we've talked about gen 1 gen 2 and gen 3 i think we should talk about the special variants of each engine and we're going to start with gen 1 with the roadrunner motor which is the engine that you could find in the boss 302. now this engine featured quite a bit of changes from the uh just base Gen 1 Mustang GT engine, and it was pretty much all in the name of good high RPM engine operation. The Roadrunner engine featured forged connecting rods, CNC ported cylinder heads, and a special short runner intake manifold to help improve top end power. This engine also features larger camshafts and stiffer valve springs, which also help increase top end power as well as maintain high engine RPM without blowing up. At the time the Roadrunner was released, it was the highest horsepower naturally aspirated engine Ford had ever offered, outputting an impressive 444 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. Now moving to Gen 2, we have the even more ridiculous variant, which is the one that you're probably all more familiar with, which is the 5.2 Voodoo motor that you could find in the GT350 and the GT350R. Now at the time that it came out, it was pretty insane. And today it's still really insane. And it's very exotic and wild, especially for an American made V8. The biggest thing that makes the Voodoo special is what you probably already know, which is that flat plane crankshaft compared to the standard cross plane crankshaft that you'll find in most V8s, including the Coyote. To put it simply, the flat plane crank uses a 180 degree configuration where the opposing rod journals are opposite of each other instead of 90 degrees from each other like they would be on a cross plane motor. When one piston is at top dead center, the opposing piston is at bottom dead center. This design usually results in a lighter rotating assembly as less counterweight is needed to balance the crankshaft. Now it should be noted that the Voodoo has a special firing order which is different than most flat plane crank engines, which is partially what gives it that unique exhaust note. But unfortunately, the Voodoo does have significantly more rotating mass than other flat plane crankshaft engines such as a Ferrari V8. Just something worth noting. The Voodoo engine also got its own cylinder head design and while it's very similar to the Coyote head, the ports are larger to increase power, the camshafts are bigger, and the valves are bigger. It also got its own intake manifold which is really similar to the Coyote intake manifold but with slightly longer intake runners and a larger intake manifold to help improve low end power since flat plane crank engines typically lack good low end power. Thanks to the larger displacement, the flat plane crankshaft, super high RPM, redline, improved cylinder heads, this engine outputs 
526 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. Now, the last Coyote variant that we're going to talk about is the Predator, which is the all-new engine that you'll find in the 2020 GT500, which is based on the Voodoo motor, but it's been reverted back to a cross-plane crankshaft, and they stuck a giant supercharger on top of it. The compression ratio on the Predator was lowered from 12 to 1 to a more boost-friendly 9.5 to 1. The heads are CNC ported version of the Voodoo heads, and the valves are larger. It also got a bunch of other small changes to basically make it more reliable for forced induction. All of those changes result in a ridiculous power output of 760 horsepower and 625 pound-feet of torque. So there you guys have it. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the changes between Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, and the special variants, which are the Roadrunner, Voodoo, and Predator. If you guys like this video, please, please smash the thumbs up button because it really helps out the channel. Get subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. Drop a comment down below letting me know if I missed anything or what kind of videos you want to see in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.